Matthew 19, 23 through 24 says, basically, it's hard for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. And yet, as an executive coach, I work with a lot of clients who are Christians, faithful believers in Jesus that really do want to make a lot of money so that they can help other people. This is a kind of recent philosophy known as earning to give. And it is really deceitful what it's, what's going on here. And I want to expose a little bit more of it because I think it's great to go use the gifts and talents you have, do great in the marketplace, and then of course take that and redistribute it to those that are around you, that God's put near you, that you can help. This is the whole idea of the first century church. Acts 2.42, I think it uh, is. I might be mixing that up, but they gave to everyone that had need. They sold land and with the money helped those that were less fortunate. This is great. And in my opinion, the only place a socialistic society works is in a small church, you know, not for a nation. But is it okay for us as Christians to go pursue being very wealthy so we can give more money? to those in need. And if it is, how can you make sure, how can we make sure we're not just pursuing money and kind of lying to ourselves? I think a part of the answer is really understanding where this earning to give philosophy started in the modern day marketplace so we can understand the true motivations behind it. So keep watching and I'm going to get into that so that we can make sure when we get to heaven, we hear well done, good and faithful servant. Hi, my name is Sean Summercamp, and this is Motivation Ear Christian Coaching. I did a, a Zoom class on this earlier this year, which I've uploaded to my membership site. If you want to become a member, I spent about 90 minutes on this in way more detail, so please go there if you're interested. Where I'll start is Sam Bankman Freed. If you haven't heard of that guy, he was the guy who founded a company called, I think it was called FTX, or maybe that was his exchange, but it was basically a Bitcoin business that he was getting people to invest in, and he created his own Bitcoin exchange and some very wealthy, very famous people got involved in this, put their money into it, and Sam Bankman Freed became filthy rich. And then finally, recently, in 2023, he got busted for it all being a, a scam. It was basically a Ponzi scheme. He was paying people back with getting more people to invest. Now, where this got so dicey and why it was thrown into the spotlight so big is because he was one of these guys that was driving around a beat up old, old Toyota, walking around in flip-flops and short, shabby clothes. He made this very loud proclamation that he was going to give away 99% of his wealth and use his exchange to funnel money to the less needy, to the more needy, people with less money. Well, it turns out where he was living was definitely not a small place. And when he was being interviewed at, in the lead up to him being arrested. He talked about a couple of people that he loved and worshiped, I think is the right way to say, that got him really inspired to follow this earning to give philosophy. What he modeled it after were his two heroes, Toby Ord, who started a foundation called Giving What We Can, and William McAskill, who founded an organization called 80,000 Hours. Both of these guys proclaim Let's make a bunch of money using our gifts and skills instead of volunteering in a, you know, a food pantry or a soup line or working at a battered women's shelter or an orphanage. Let's go use these great big brains of ours, make a bunch of money in the marketplace and then give to all these people that have needs, help start bigger foundations, fund foundations that are helping the less needy. And it does seem like these two guys are doing that. I think Toby Ord is living off of just $30,000 a year and it's pretty well substantiated, although I'm not exactly sure. But this is kind of the idea that Bankman Freed was going after. Well, the dark side of this is Ord and McGaskill are both rationalists. And they basically founded their beliefs off of 
a guy named Peter Singer, who founded or started the effective altruism movement. It's modern day. He's done a bunch of TED Talks, etc. In fact, if you go and listen to these TED Talks, it sounds like a sermon on a Sunday of being sacrificial and giving and helping people in need. It's really impressive. But the dark side of it is, as I'm trying to get to, he's a utilitarian. He doesn't believe in God, and neither do Toby Ord or William McGaskill. As rationalists, they are utilitarian. They believe, let's work things out through reason, not religion. They don't believe in God. So this guy, Peter Singer, had a debate on a Christian talk show called Unbelievable, where he was debating with another a Christian guy about this and basically saying, as part of a utilitarian mindset, philosophical movement, you euthanize the people that are weak and helpless and aren't needed. You don't help them, you get rid of them. This is ultimately why Ord and McCaskill never really blew the whistle on Sam Bankman Freed because they're utilitarian. And they were like, yeah, he's sticking it to some wealthy people, but all the money he's making, it's going to other places where people could, he helped more. So they turned a blind eye. And a really great investigative reporter did a series of articles on this named Charlotte Alter for Time Magazine. She blew the lid off of this and it does kind of expose what's really going on. So if by chance, part of the reason why you're wanting to make a bunch of money so you can give it away, it might be because you've been influenced unknowingly by this effective altruism movement and the earning to give movement, which are utilitarian. They are anti-God, anti-Christ. They really are. You can do a little bit of research and find this out. So how do we protect, protect ourselves from making sure we don't end up there? Because when we start making a bunch of money, when we're chasing it, we do risk shipwrecking our faith. So what I recommend is you find the place or places that you actually want to help and make a decision now exactly how much you are going to help and how you're going to maybe escalate that over the years so you can set what that earning amount will be and give it away, commit it to God, commit it to that organization, write them and saying, I'm gonna give you $50,000 a year, I'm gonna give you $300,000 a year starting at this time so that they are expecting it and you're not gonna keep it for yourself. This is the temptation. We start making the money and we keep it for ourselves. When I look at the story of Paul and he talks about it, it's Philippians 4, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The context of it is being content with a lot and a little. And I believe because Paul was a Pharisee, as Jesus said, Pharisees loved money. He probably made a bunch of money living as a Pharisee. So in Philippians 4, he said, I know what it's like to make a lot. And then when he found Christ, when Christ found him and he gave his life, to the mission of the gospel, he left all that behind him. And now he's going from place to place, making tents to make a little bit of money and across the Mediterranean, he knows what it's lit to live with very little or without any. I can do all things who, through Christ who strengthens me. So yeah, let's go make that money if you want. Pledge to give it away right now before you start making it so that there isn't a temptation to hold on to it. This really is the deceitfulness of wealth. Jesus said it. Wealth is deceitful. So much so, I know people who are disciples of Jesus and fully dedicated, who started a business and used a marketing platform or program guaranteeing them six-figure incomes when this person who'd been in this business for three and a half, four years and has not made six figures even close, but guaranteeing that all of his clients would make six, fig six figures in three months. It was a blatant lie. But thankfully, he asked for input from me and others. And when I kind of scrolled through his marketing plan and I saw him doing this, I asked him, hey, why are you promising something? Are you at the six figure mark? Maybe I missed that. And he said, no, I'm not. And I said, so what's causing you to make this promise to clients? Oh, that's what the marketing people that I hired told me to do. That's how I'm going to get a lot of clients. And I said, yeah, yeah, that's actually fraud. That's a deceitfulness of wealth. We are in a generational time where people are applauded for making a lot of money 
and not investigated for how they make it. And you're successful, good for you if you make a bunch of money. No, we're gonna have to answer to God for how we make it. It's not okay. If we think it's okay, we are also utilitarian. We are living as if there is no God. God has a lot to say about what we do with money, about honesty, about excessive usury, tricking people, improper scales, all of that is about the deceitfulness of wealth. So if you want some more input on this, write me below, we can chat or email me, sean at motivationear.com and we can start a dialogue. This is a very important topic to me. I really hope you've uh, gleaned a lot from this and tell me what you th your, your thoughts. Even if there's some dissenting thoughts I really do wanna hear, please comment below. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for two new videos each week. Tell me in the comments below about your career situation and I'll make a video for you with a shout out. You can also become a member at motivationear.com. Your career is not just a way to make a living, it's a way to transform the world.